After the break, zoologist and radio host Danny Mendez shows us some reptiles and amphibians seen less often in the pet trade that need an expert's hand. Adoptions and Pet of the Week are also ahead, so keep it right here. The Pet Stop will be right back. Welcome back to The Pet Stop. I'm Dr. Brian Voynick. Reptiles and amphibians make great pets for certain people, but before you get one, it's important to learn that if that particular species is right for you. So here to show us some of the rare species that show up in the pet trade and how to care for them is Danny Mendez, a zoologist and host of the internet radio show, Urban Jungles Radio. Great to have you. Thank you, thank you for having let's, me. Let's get to this beautiful pair of snakes, the emerald tree boa, which is really interesting and, That's and right. gorgeous. These are emerald tree boas, they're really unique snakes from South America. As you can see, they have this beautiful, brilliant emerald coloration. Mm -hmm. And you'd think it makes them stand out, but they actually camouflage very well with it. Um, these snakes live a completely arboreal lifestyle, which means they live their entire lives up in the trees, hardly ever come down. Hmm. And um, it's exactly in this kind of habitat that they blend in perfectly well. That green coloration really helps them blend in into the trees, and, and the white dappling on it kind of looks like sunlight in a way, so it's like sunlight right. dappling sure. on the green leaves. Sure. And, and they're totally nocturnal, huh? These are. These are nocturnal species. You can tell they, they have those elliptical pupils, those eyes with a straight slit like a cat. That's mm -hmm. usually your first sign of a, a nocturnal snake. Um, they have a lot of other really special kind of um, adaptations. One you can see there is their bodies. They have this, this very strong body, a strong um, prehensile tail that helps them climb. And they can really move their bodies a lot farther away than most other snakes can, which aids in climbing around and, okay. and sitting up in and the What kind of special care do these guys need? They require very humid environments, mm. and it's always tricky when you're keeping snakes in a humid environment because it's a delicate balance between airflow and the proper humidity. You don't want to have any mold or okay. any kind of um, fungus issues like that. Right. So um, that in an arboreally oriented cage, they want something vertical with some height. Obviously, okay. a snake that likes to climb would feel most comfortable being able to climb up and down accordingly. All right, and they live on small mammals. Let's get to the gecko in yes, the limited time we have here. Sure. Get some Let's pretty cool looking geckos. Um, yeah, up next, these are really amazing geckos. These are from Madagascar, wow. and they are mossy leaf-tailed geckos. Mm. Um, by taking a look at them, you can pretty much see where they get their name from. They look like they they're do. made up of living pieces yeah. of moss. With camouflage. Um, yeah, it's a fantastic, fantastic looking animal. They have this, this beautiful frill of skin all around their body, and what they'll do is during the daytime, they'll kind of um, hang head down. Here's that picture, yeah, like you can't even see them. Yeah, they'll head, hang head down, just like that picture. Oops, mm -hmm. there he goes. Um, mm -hmm. And essentially, they camouflage really well into the bark. They're awesome. pretty much invisible during the day, and they'll sit there and wait out the day, and at night, they'll wake up, and they'll start actively hunting. There's actually one there with the head off to the right, and you, could, you could just can't hardly make it out. Yeah, they're really spectacular. I have another one here are to show you. Are they good pets? What kind of special needs? They're very good pets. They are a little different than most lizards in that they require cool, moist conditions, not warm like most others. Okay. They tend to live in mountain, mountain areas, so they really like the cooler, moist weather. All right, right. Very, very interesting. And now you, uh, next we have a monitor. We huh? have a monitor lizard. Monitor lizard. Right. Different from the ones that are invading Florida, though, huh? Very different than the ones that are invading Florida. Mm -hmm. This is actually one of the smaller species oh, of yeah? monitor lizards. Yeah. And one of the rarer, too. They're very unique looking. And you, you might see a little bit of a theme coming up here. This is also an arboreal animal. Okay. Um, and as you can see, they have this beautiful bright green coloration. Wow. That is very different looking from the other monitors. It's very different from, from, yeah, the other monitors in the same family. It's very long, it's very powerful an animal. Essentially, it becomes a living vine in the trees. Wow. Once again, another species that spends all of its time up in the trees where they feed on birds, more ma small mammals, mm -hmm. um, birds' eggs, nests, basically anything they can find. And it's pretty cool. If I can get him to do it, you'll see his, t his tongue comes out just like a snake. Yeah. Um, they have yeah. a very good sense of smell, wow. just like a snake does, and sure. they'll use that to aid them in finding prey up yeah. in the trees. I had one uh, uh, such monitor lizard, a cousin, I guess, take a Russian turtle from my hand and try to consume it during one show That's rough. some years ago. Monitor lizards are really unique pets, and they're actually very intelligent for lizards. Most uh -huh. people don't realize it. They're not just kind of this run and skimpy lizard. They'll learn uh -huh. to recognize you. They'll learn to recognize patterns. So it's a little bit of a challenge in keeping them. You definitely have to have the right setup and be able to give them a lot of food. They need a big variety in their diet as well. All right, that's the emerald monitor. This is the emerald Decent monitor. Decent pet or a little high maintenance? Um, um, high maintenance in the fact that they, they require high heat and humidity and a very varied diet. They okay. like to eat, um, I feed them quail chicks, um, baby mice, eggs, a little yeah. bit of everything. So yeah. um, 
a, a pretty interesting pet. All right, Danny, we have time for one more, and I guess that's the giant marine toad. Yes, the huh? giant marine toad. And you've been favorite. doing your radio show for how long now? Um, the Urban Jungles Radio Show has been going on for about two years now. How do we get to it? You can go to urbanjunglesradio.com, okay. and um, you can check out all our latest episodes there. All and right. It's a really interesting and show. And you've had uh, our guest uh, and expert, Dr. Paul Reedy, on the show. That's before. right. I've had Paul Reedy, uh, Bob Irwin, Steve Irwin's father was on our wow. show recently. We do a lot of topics in conservation and animal care. This and this guy's great. This is one of it's my cool. favorites. Yeah, this is a marine toad. Mm -hmm. um, you either love them or hate them. I personally love them. <laughs> there's, there's just nothing you know you can't love about toads. They're they're really cute yeah. and, and they do a great you know they, they do a great service in eating a lot of insects and and all kinds of other things. Now this toad is is really interesting because this toad is hated throughout most of the world. They've established themselves in all different parts of the world and they're not welcome. In Australia alone, this species has single-handedly decimated a lot of the native fauna living in Australia. Wow. They've established themselves there. They were um, purposely introduced in the 40s to help control beetles um, in, in the cane, the sugar cane industry, and they've kind mm -hmm. of exploded and taken over. At this size, they can they can eat just about anything they'll fit in their mouths, which becomes a problem later on. Wow, and they can get up to six pounds? They can get to six pounds and grow about almost 14 inches now to vent length. This one's only about six inches, maybe seven, to give okay. you an idea of the size, and probably yeah. not even a pound. Interesting. They'll, they'll get to the size of a dinner plate, and even at this size, he's eating mice. Oh my gosh, wow. And um, how long do they live about? They could live in excess of 20 years. In the mm. wild, they've been known to live um, over 15 years. And, and probably a big reason for that, as you can see right here, they have these big poison glands that kind of sit right behind them. Now, they're not really prone to using them as much, but these big glands really give them a leg up on keeping ahead of um, other predators. There's very wow. few animals that will wow. prey on them. So cool. Danny, thanks so much for sharing Thank your you critters. Thank you for having me on. It was Good a pleasure. Good to have you back. All right.